Then we come to Africa. The U.S. said Africa should be free to choose while also trying to dictate its choices. The U.S. ordered African nations, and I use that word with caution, the U.S ordered African nations to respect Western sanctions and not buy Russian oil. But the US gave a free pass to Europe to violate the very same rules and keep buying Russian gas. African countries are calling out this hypocrisy. This is what South Africa said last week. We will not be bullied into taking sides. The US needs to stop patronizing others. The same message came from Rwanda. I told the U.S. to respect its sovereignty. Back in the month of June, the head of the African Union said the very same thing. He met Vladimir Putin in the city of Sochi. He praised Africa's relations with Russia and asked the U.S. to lift sanctions. In the month of April, the United Nations General Assembly held a vote. A vote to suspend Russia from the Human Rights Council. Do you know how many African countries voted for this resolution? Only 10 out of 54. Nine countries opposed the resolution and 35 others abstained or were absent. This is a serious snub to the United States and it wasn't the first one. In the month of March this year, when the UNG held a vote calling upon Russia to withdraw troops from Ukraine, 17 African countries abstained from voting against Moscow. What explains all of this? Is it the food and fuel shortage that Western sanctions have triggered in Africa or is it the patronizing attitude of Western countries towards Africa? The answer, perhaps, is a mix of both. You see, African nations are tired of being pawns in global struggles. They're tired of being told what to do and suffer the repercussions of decisions that are not theirs. The last Cold War left them frozen in time. It turned their continent into a battlefield, a staging ground for the East and the West. The 1960 Congo crisis, the 1966 Namibian War of Independence, the 1975 Angolan Civil War, the 1977 War in Ethiopia. They were all a result of the battle between the US and the Soviet Union, a battle between capitalism and communism. These wars claimed millions of African lives, cost untold amounts of money, and hindered Africa's growth. This time, African states are wary of repeating that mistake. As are several other countries. India, for instance, it has refused to tow America's line. In the last Cold War, India pursued the policy of non-alignment, non-adherence to either side. This time, India is pursuing a policy of multi-alignment, a series of parallel relationships that strengthen multilateral ties, meaning India is taking decisions based solely on its own national interest, not on how other governments are going to perceive those decisions. And just like the last time, Latin America is on board with India in making these calls. Take Mexico, for instance. A few days back, the Mexican president said that he was going to submit a proposal to the United Nations, a proposal to create a commission for world truce. And he said this commission would remain for five years and it should include Prime Minister Modi of India, Pope Francis and United Nations Secretary General. These should be the members. He said this commission is required so that governments can dedicate themselves to supporting their own people instead of fighting other people's wars. The message is loud and clear. This is not the 20th century. The times have changed. The US cannot bully others into taking sides. It cannot be oblivious to their interests and then issue lectures on morality. The US set out to isolate Russia in this war through economic sanctions and political pressure. It's not making much progress. Europe faces a tough winter ahead. The world is suffering food shortages. Russia too is suffering, but it's far from isolated, let alone defeated.